I'm about to download Newtington from GitHub, which is one of a couple of things you need to communicate between Linux and a brother electronic knitting machine. The other is a customized FTDI cable. I made this one myself following this tutorial from the image to track website. Um, I'll include a link to this page in the description and you can also buy one if you haven't got the time to make it up yourself. Modern Linux kernels should recognize the cable. Um, if you type in LSUSB, you can see it listed with 04036001. But right now, only root has read-write access. So to use Nittington as a normal user, you'll have to create a custom device rule. Now, my rule is located at etc udev rules.d 10 hyphen local rules. Um, I'll give you more information in the description about writing custom rules. You can see that I've used the device ID. That's just so you associate this rule with the right device. But most importantly, I've changed the mode to 066. Um, Symlink you don't have to put in. I just put it in because when I plug in the cable, if that file is created, then I know the rule has worked. You will need to restart UDEV or reboot your computer for the rule to be applied. Okay, let's have a look at the README and see what dependencies you need. Oh, there's a list of all the supported machines there. Now, the one I'm going to be using is a KH950i. Let's see what it says about Linux. Oh, it needs a modified SDL2 library to add X drag and drop support. And it's tested under Ubuntu only, which I'm using Debian. So, let's see how that goes. Um, to be honest, I get on alright with the normal SDL2 library from the repository, so I'm going to stick with it. And you also need free image. First I'm going to get free image. This is all for the GUI, so for the command line you don't have to worry too much. I'm going to install the development file as long with the one that you need because I have a feeling I'm going to have to compile Nittington to work on my machine. And I just have a look for SDL2 and I've already installed it and also installed the development file so I should be okay with it. Okay, let's try the included binary and I'm clicking on it and it doesn't work. Well, I kind of know why. This is the compile script, but first I have to have a look at it. And I can see what's wrong. I'm running a 64-bit architecture, and it's been compiled for 32-bit. To find out what I need to put in that script, I'm going to use obj-dump-i. Um, I've got all these results because I've installed multi-arc, um, but I can't use... I can't compile for 32 bit because my free image is for 64. So I'm going to have to change a, a little bit of the script. Now I just have to run the script in terminal. So it's dot slash, um, what's it called? Linux GUI make. Okay, I'm going to try the binary that it's created again. I'm going to edit the image before I import it into Nittington. So I'm open it in GIMP. And because the stitch isn't perfectly square, I'm going to have to stretch the image. I'm going to do that by reducing the width to 80%. And I'm going to have to scale it again because each pixel is going to represent a single stitch and I want it to be 50 stitches wide. So let the height work itself out. Now I need to reduce the colours. I'm going to start with posture eyes so I can see it a bit better. Let's replace the red with black. I want to fill in that little bit with black.
change it to index mode, one bit palette, or get rid of all the extra colours. When it's knitted, it will come out as a circle. Okay, let's go back to knitting turn. Let's click format, select the machine. And now I need to make sure this is always on top so I can drag the image into it. Let's start the emulator. First it asks for the device. Now I need to go over to the knitting machine and enter in the function for loading patterns. Now knitting can start it to send the information. It's going to take a little while. I'm going to have to wait till it beeps and the green light comes on. And if you didn't create your uh, custom device rule, this is where it will fail if you open Knittington as a normal user. You can see also that there's an edit pattern option. Uh, you can highlight the file name, click that, and you'll get a chance to make some last minute adjustments. There it goes. You have to stop it yourself. And now go over to the knitting machine and start the pattern. gone back to its circular shape. It might be a little bit squished, maybe I should have used 75% width, but it is near and it's a bit stretchy, so perhaps I just should leave it to settle for a little while. I'll show you the one I've used on a title screen as well. This is also 50 stitches wide. It's a little bit creased. I did it a while ago. If you want to keep watching, I'll show you how to use the command line interface. I've got an example here where I've used text as a source, which has been uh, made into this image with Image Magic. And from that, I was able to write my own message in knit. But I've missed out the KH in front of the 950. Now on to the command line. The command line doesn't accept images as a source, so I'm going to look at the raw image format. It takes a hex file, with the first four bytes being the width and height. This is also in hex, and if you scroll down, it will tell you what each of the other values mean, down at the bottom there. You can just open a hex editor. I'm using bless, and just type in these values. You don't have to worry about line breaks. And if you save this file, you should be able to import it into Nittington. I've got an example I've already done here. And in the hex editor you can see the pattern. I'm just going to highlight all the contrast yarn and stretch it out to the right width. I think it's 24 stitches. And uh, it gives you an idea of what it's going to look like. It's slightly offset because of the first four bytes. I'm going to import that letter B now. So I'm putting the full path to the, the command line interface and press question mark for all the options. Then M for machine, KH950, set my machine. Then F for format, A to add the image, which is B.raw. And then you can see it has a preview. It's pretty handy. It's e for emulate. I'm going to use my sim link I created in my device rule. Makes it easier. And now I have to go to the machine and tap in the function for loading new patterns. Just like what I did before. There it goes.
the emulator doesn't stop by itself it will just stick and then you have to control C to get out of it and Q to get out of Knittington okay I'm going to try and uh, combine all that in one line with something more interesting than just a B so press question mark and a Q that will show me all the options I can work with I wrote a script which uh, takes text as an input, then Image Magic creates and edits the image similar to what I did in the GIMP. And while it's working, I'll show you my script. There are some for loops. That's so Image Magic can go through each pixel, decide whether it's contrast yarn. And there's, I use the printf command to output to a hex file. I'll include more information in the description. Here's the image that was made. And this is the final image after all the editing. And now I'm going to put it through Knittington. So put in the full path of the binary then X for exit on errors, M for my machine, KH950, and then A to add, oh, F for format, sorry, then A to add the, what I've just created, which is called my image.raw, and then E to emulate, it's going to ask me for the device file, I'm going to put my sim link in again, and I'm going to put Q to quit. And you go back over to the machine again to put in my uh, load function. There it goes. I don't know how big the image can be. I found that it can accept up to about 196 stitches width, but I'm sure there's a limit to what the memory on the machine can hold. And again, I have to wait for the green light and the beep. Didn't take too long. I'll just show you the finished result.